Welcome back to the channel. It's Sam with GSK Wealth Builders. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing a special report. It's uh, the Q1. Q1 2020 has finished. So I'm just going to be doing the Q1 uh, 2020 crypto update. I know it's a month late, but uh, I don't gather the information. I, I just crowdsource it, right? So uh, one of the best platforms in the world for crypto uh, tracking, CoinGecko. They just released a report, so I'm just going to go over that report and make some comments on what I see. So we're going to start out with the market landscape of crypto. So in Q1 2021, cryptocurrency market cap hit over $2 trillion. The top 30 coins did 146 return in market cap. So we started out at January 2021 at... 700 billion dollars and by april 2021 we we're at 1.9 trillion dollars in market cap right so relative to q1 the cryptocurrency market grew vigorously in both market cap and trading volume so the trading volume is up 155 percent year over year so more people are adopting crypto when they're at home that's what my guess is uh q1 2021 coinbase went public Fidelity still waiting on their their ETF approval for Bitcoin. There's been, I think, four ETFs in Bitcoin in Canada and four approved for Ethereum in Canada. So hopefully they get some other blockchains or some kind of mixed funds because I would like to see some of the good blockchains, Polkadot, Solana, Cardano, be included in the ETF so you can buy in registered funds. So altcoins... This is just the returns of the top altcoins, right? So you have BNB, ADA, DOT, Bitcoin, Ethereum. So if you look at BNB versus Bitcoin, 710% return from January to April versus Bitcoin's 294% return and Ethereum's 103. However, Ethereum has just gone crazy in the last couple of weeks. So that's going to be included on the next quarter report. So the top five cryptos, if you hold the top five cryptos, you're looking at a 364% return blended you can't you can't complain with that so bitcoin market dominance is decreasing over time so by end of q1 it was at 65 percent as of today i believe it's around 48 percent uh, ethereum 13 percent polka dot two percent that's amazing because they are less than a year old i believe so just to see polka dot do something like that is, is pretty crazy um let's see Stable coins. So stable coins are going to be a measure of So stable coins are a measure of just market liquidity, I would say. So the stable coin market is $32 billion. And by market liquidity, I just mean people who are moving to cash or people who are holding cash on the sidelines while they wait to trade. So if you look at the low base, Binance, US dollar, and UST, US Terra rose over 250% and 800%. US Terra is a monster. Um, Do Kwan, one of the top four people that I would follow in crypto. I'm going to have another video on that, on the top four people you should be following in crypto. Do Kwan is one of them. And he invented the Terra blockchain and US Terra. And the way that he's just putting things together in korea is amazing six percent of crypto or six percent of payments now are done with uh, crypto and us terra so stable coins are being used more of a medium of exchange so it's just showing the log velocity of the stable coins don't really understand that chart bitcoin analysis so bitcoin booming you look at Q1, we're looking at $29,000 Bitcoin is where we started out. We ended up at $58,000 Bitcoin, right? So it's it's steady it's steady growing. Coinbase leading the way in the news. So when you when it comes to Bitcoin, that's the common term I would use almost for crypto, right? When when you're telling someone that doesn't know anything about crypto, you just say, "Hey, buy Bitcoin." And then that's what they would defer to at, at this, this point in time. Maybe Ethereum's going to pass them though. So Coinbase, the listing was, you know, 14 April. You've seen they just pumped it. Same thing about the, the suits, right? They, they always try to sell it to you at the high and it just dumps. Then eventually there'll be a price that you can buy at. Tesla bought Bitcoin as an investment. The top 
or public companies in general, own now 1% of the Bitcoin Bitcoin outstanding coins, right? So Fidelity, we already talked about them. Visa. So Visa is now using USDC as settlement on the Ethereum blockchain. And then Grayscale is going to be offering some more crypto ETFs. They do have the Ethereum one and the Bitcoin one in Canada already. So Bitcoin's perception as a hedge against inflation is strengthening. I think people are now noticing that the Fed has been printing trillions of dollars every couple months. The second that the market stag is stagnant, they just pop money out of thin air right now they say money doesn't grow on trees but money can just be printed in like at the click of a button you just print trillions of dollars right so if you had dollars here in april 2021 or dollars back you know a year ago and all of a sudden you had you just switched your dollars in your bank account to bitcoin which is very volatile you would be up a lot so black thursday I'm not sure what the relevance of Black Thursday is one year later, but Bitcoin rallied over a thousand percent. I think Black Thursday is them talking about uh, in March when the market just got smoked. So this is what I was talking about. This is the top 10 companies that are public that are holding Bitcoin in one way or another. So Voyager, I like Voyager as a stock and I like them as an app and not as much as a token. I do like them as a stock. Uh, Galaxy, they're, they're, they got a lot there. Tesla, 48,000 Bitcoins. I'm not sure if this was before or after they sold, but they sold 10% to test the liquidity to see if they could do it. And then MicroStrategy, they're just going to keep buying and accumulating. So there's going to be, I, I'll be looking for more big companies to start buying Bitcoin and putting that on their treasury as a hedging against inflation. So Bitcoin, when you're talking about the the asset class. So gold is an asset class. And one of the things that you need to think about is typical asset classes are usually 7% of global wealth or 7% of stock market allocations. So when you look at global wealth at 400 trillion and US wealth at 100 trillion, gold 10% of the portfolio, right? It's probably 2% of global wealth, I would say, but Gold is doing really well. So Bitcoin to get to there or crypto to get to there, right? Has to get do 10x. Now it's 2 trillion now, so it has to do, you know, 5x. DeFi analysis. So DeFi is my, my favorite space. DeFi is changing the way banking is done. You can now hold crypto and earn yield on your crypto. You can hold coins and mint new coins with your with your current coins while you can purchase things on credit and then pay it off with the gains that you have in crypto. For example, you could purchase something back when Bitcoin was 29,000 and then pay it off when Bitcoin is 60,000 without selling your Bitcoin. This is what DeFi is doing. So the DeFi started out in April 20-ish area. We're at 1.79 billion. April 21, we're at 100 billion. And today is about 121 billion. So uh, DeFi's market cap is just moving and it's, it's gonna keep going. Uh, DeFi TVL it's the same thing so usually the tvl and the market cap are very similar so the total value locked is around 72 billion on just ethereum and binance chain gas fees so this is crazy so gas fees on the ethereum blockchain is still high at this point in time it was 57 dollars just to swap ethereum to die it's probably around 20 dollars now and eth to die on the Binance chain is it's not even nine dollars anymore. It's like a it's like a dollar. Okay, so the DeFi tokens that had the best returns, Uniswap. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. I would obviously think that that would do very well. Then you have Chainlink. Uh, Chainlink is an oracle. So the oracle is just data on the blockchain. It that's the way that you can communicate actual data, numbers, stats, things like that is on the blockchain. Luna. I talked about Doquan. That guy, you got to follow him. Everything that he's talking about on Twitter, he's spot on. Ave, a lending platform. Synthetics is a synthetic asset platform. And then if you look at the top five DeFi tokens, Luna experienced the highest growth in the first quarter, 27x. That's crazy. All right, so the introduction to the DeFi ecosystem. So what is DeFi right now? The biggest part of DeFi is going to be lending and decentralized exchanges. Then you have oracles. 
you have derivatives, you have yield aggregators, which is going to be huge because you can earn yield by just, you put your coin here, you make 50% on your money. When it goes down to 20%, you can put your coin somewhere else. It gets crazy, right? So the DeFi space, obviously you have the top platforms, Uniswap, SushiSwap, and PancakeSwap. SushiSwap has updated their website. It's amazing. It's amazing. I use Uniswap and PancakeSwap. I don't use SushiSwap. Their website is, it's looking really good. So the Ethereum killers. <laughs> no one's killed Ethereum yet, but I think Binance is going to get there. I think uh, Polkadot and Solana are going to get there. So let's see what we got here. These are the exchanges. So you got one inch exchange curve. Now on Binance chain, you got, so look at this. You got on the Ethereum blockchain, you got Uniswap. Why didn't they put Uniswap there? I don't know. Then on the Binance swap, on the Binance chain, you got sushi swap phantom you have sushi swap polka dot you have sushi swap so all of these people are building on different uh, different platforms audius they decide to go on solana so solana a transaction is like 0 0.0005 of a cent so then you got the ethereum killers so decentralized exchanges pancake swap destroys uniswap but uniswap has way more coins Bakery swap, I'm going to be talking about them in another video. Jewel swap, I don't use them. Uh, but pancake swap, that's where you want to go to get all your Binance coins. You know, 20 to a dollar, 20 cents to a dollar for a transaction. Now, when you go on yield aggregation, pancake bunny. All day I'm on pancake bunny, right? I'm exploring other, other platforms, but the premise of pancake bunny, say you have Ethereum sitting in your wallet and your Ethereum is earning nothing. You can send your Ethereum to Nexo, like I told told uh, you about in another video. You send your Ethereum to Nexo, they're gonna pay you 5%. You can boost it up to 7% if you buy Nexo tokens. You can go to PancakeSwap and you can put your Binance coin, for example, which moved very similar to Ethereum. You put your Binance coin on PancakeSwap and make 27% on, so you're gonna have 27% more uh, pancake swap or 27% more Binance coin in a year by staking it. And so that's a good way to make 29%. Now you've just made a floor. So you can actually afford to lose a little bit on, on the coin in the year. And you're going to have more coins through the dividends. So it's it's unbelievable. And then Luna. Luna is, a, is a, it's amazing. A lot of people call themselves Ethereum killers. But I would just say they're compliments. I would say Ethereum is Ford and BMW Mercedes is coming, but we haven't seen Tesla yet, right? So that's the way I would see, see it as, is Ethereum is going to be around as Ford. And you can go to Ford to get the F-150, but if you want a sports car, the Mustang is not that relevant anymore, right? You're going to have, you're going to have the Bugatti, you're going to have the Audi, you know, the Audi A8, you're going to have, or the Audi R8. You're going to have Lamborghinis, you know, McLarens. All of those things are going to be on the blockchain. That's the way I would compare it to. And Luna, Luna's probably Mercedes. Luna's up there. So $7 billion market cap right now. Stable coins. So the stable coin landscape is getting more and more diverse. You have, you know, the USDC is the one that I use the most. Binance USD, I can get 45% yield on Pancake Bunny using Binance USD. And then you have the algorithm ones. So these ones are backed by nothing almost. Um, so that's all I'm going to talk about there. So multiple factors have attributed to the failures of signage type models. So liquidity bootstrapping, limitations on that AMM. So the algo stable coins, I just don't trust them. I want something backed by something. I just feel like people will always go to the ones that are backed by something. The algorithm stable coins, they, they'd be at a dollar. And then when the market tanks, they would just depeg, right? And then all of a sudden, what you were looking for in the stable coin is not stable. So um, they will get there. But eventually, you know, Frax is partially collateralized by USDC. So they actually have to have dollars in, in reserves, right? So algorithm contenders, I'm not going to talk about that because I don't believe in them right now. I think it's too early, but they're getting their Phi is the one that I would go with if I was going to go with one. Okay, so Ethereum scaling solutions. This is big. So Ethereum has issues. 
they do 17 transactions per second. So what that means is Visa does 50,000 transactions per second. If 1% of humans are using crypto or have wallets in crypto, that's not 1% using because daily that's not using. If that was using, the Ethereum blockchain would be blocked. So now what they want to do is they want to have, for example, Polygon. Oops. Polygon, which is a scaling solution. So you can run all of the Ethereum apps on Polygon and it can be faster. It's like 50,000 transactions or more per second. Then you have ZK rollups. I don't really know much about ZK rollups, but all I can say is it's, it's very relevant when I'm looking at Vitalik. He's always talking about ZK rollups, ZK swaps, things like that. So $132 million was lost due to DeFi exploits. I think that number is now at 276 billion. So 132 million. Okay. So 132 million was lost this quarter. Urine finance got hacked. Alpha Hamora hacked. Meerkat, Dodo, Iron Finance, Roll, Pay Network. Whew, that one was bad. Someone was able to take the code and print more coins of Pay Network and then dump them as he's printing them. So he's just printing more. He was the Fed. That's what he was. Right. And they had to make a new coin. Like, that was crazy. NFTs. So NFT, I'm not going to really talk about NFTs. All I'm, I'm going to talk about the platforms that I like about NFTs. So I would rather be the one selling the product than the one buying the product and trying to flip it. I have tried flipping NFTs. It hasn't worked. doesn't mean it's not possible, but it hasn't worked. So Flow, number one. That's going to be my number one platform. Engine, actually, Engine's up there too. Flow and Engine are tied. Because this engine is gaming, flow is is sports. They've only done the the deal with the NBA. Then Super Farm is supposed to be hyped up. Decentraland's been there for a long time. So if I'm going to invest in the NFT space, I'm just going to buy the flow engine chill blockchain. That's going to be my NFT, you know, Sam ETF. Don't really want to talk about that. The market space is going to be gro growing. I heard Playboy is going to be selling NFTs. Disney might be selling NFTs. They're just going to be selling digital collectibles instead of printing cards and having people rate them and things like that. So NBA Top Shots has 265,000 uh, holders of NFTs. That's amazing. That's on the Flow blockchain. CryptoPunks, CryptoKitties, and the Flow blockchain, they're like having issues scaling. They don't even have... You can buy Flow tokens. You should be able to pay in Flow tokens. They don't even have that activated. You're paying in credit card. To buy these nfts but when they activate flow as a blockchain for payment that could be the next leg up so you know look at these different brands doing nfts nike ubisoft the gaming taco bell i don't know what taco bell would do with nfts so the main thing i i see about that main thing i'll talk about nfts it's a unique you have a one of one right you can make a one of one crypto coin where I see that in my like my personal life, I go to a lot of concerts, I go to sports events, and the biggest issue I have is scalpers. So scalpers use bots to purchase coins on the blockchain. So you'd have to have a way to verify identities first, then you'd purchase these NFTs. So your your ticket could be an NFT. And then if that scalper pays or if that scalper flips the if the scalper flips the ticket. For example and it's a programmed nft you could have the nba take 90 percent of that profit back and maybe they give it back to the fans i don't know that would be great if if i buy um i don't know if i bought ed sheeran tickets and the, the base price is a hundred dollars and then someone sells it to me at five hundred dollars and that goes back to Ticketmaster. i know they're going to keep it but wouldn't it be nice if you paid five hundred dollars for an ed sharon ticket when you when the price was 100 they're like hey here's a complimentary 80 dollars of concession concessions because we just took that guy's money back maybe it would drive the prices back down for the fans i don't know that that is something i would like so exchanges already talked about the exchanges so decentralized versus centralized exchanges so you're looking at 1.2 trillion in trading volume in january then it boosted up to 1.5 trillion and then in march it dipped down to 1. 1.2 now look at this difference between centralized exchanges like coinbase binance and decentralized exchanges eventually everyone's going to be able to trade inside of their wallet and this is going to just this is going to collapse 
however, in percentage, but it won't collapse in volume because there's always going to be a newbie that wants to have a Coinbase account because they don't know anything about crypto. So centralized exchanges for spot volume is up 59%. 59% is belongs to Binance. That's why I'm a believer in Binance coin. So look at this. 59% of volume is Binance. Binance charges a toll every time that you do a right here look at merch 55 percent. they charge a toll every time you do a trade it could be five bucks like i remember doing a trade and i, I calculated it was five dollars that five dollars then one dollar and something is going to be burned from the binance coin so they're actually making their supply smaller every quarter that is amazing because if you hold the binance coin that's just going to drive the value up so uh, decentralized exchanges when it when you come to decentralized exchanges you got uniswap pancake swap is coming close now look at pancake swap in january two percent to 25 percent. that's because people are fed up with the fees right so that's all i'm going to talk about there and that is about it so the overall the overall theme that you're seeing trading volume is up right Trading volume, $150 billion in January, $302 billion in March. I'm guessing just by the trend, we're going to see $400 billion in, in April when the stats come out. So the prices are going up. There's more money coming into crypto. More people are getting locked down right now. My city's on lockdown. We were on lockdown for like 11 months. What are people going to do? They're going to get bored. They're going to trade stocks. Stocks is not doing anything right now. They might go into crypto and add some more money into crypto so that is the uh, end of the report i hope you enjoyed this just summary of what's going on so we have the themes more money coming in more volume coming in more moving from centralized to decentralized and that pancake swap stat is crazy to see pancake swap go from two percent of people using pancake swap to 25 percent is that's crazy because i'm using pancake swap every day and so that's it. That's all I have for, for now. Remember to subscribe to the channel. If you found this valuable to you, please like and, and help me grow the channel. And the more that the channel grows, the more information we're going to have coming in and we're going to open source it. So if you have any comments on the report, please share it with me. If you have any new coins, what are your top new coins? I want to know about them and we'll see if we can find a gem. So that's all we got for now. Take care.